Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm really excited with this video. Um, it's something you guys have been requesting quite a lot. We are doing a video call with a vet um, and we're going to be asking loads of questions around alopecia, around making sure your pets have a healthy skin and coat, things that I wish I'd known um, five years ago obviously before Phil developed alopecia and right now my concern is just slowing down the spread for him. Um, and trying to do everything I can with his diet to ensure that he has having as many nutrients as possible to protect whatever it is that he has left. Um, and we're going to be talking about bathing and how often you should be bathing your pets. I know we do get quite a few comments about um, how often Phil gets bathed. That's because his coat doesn't have the oils that a normal coat would have. Um, so we try and bath him a little bit more so than our other pets quite a bit more so than our other pets and um there's been questions around the frequency of that um milo is currently bopping the camera so i was just wondering if it was going to fall off there but thankfully it's safe um oh yeah you can see him in the background he's above he's above the phone and he was just putting his paw down to uh, to bop it um yeah so we're going to be talking about bathing and um things that you can do to help your dog's coat and um, what alopecia is and how what a dog's born with it was one of my questions um so yeah we're gonna get into it we're gonna introduce over linda from pooch and mutt um, she's their resident vet on demand so i'm very very excited that she's uh, partnered with us for this video um, we're gonna go through those questions and i'm gonna come on to talk about the extras that i'm adding into phil's diet that i'm making sure that his coat is staying as healthy as possible and there's my other two pets who have uh, the same diet, but obviously they don't have the skin condition. I just want to make sure that they've got as healthy a coat as possible, uh, especially Teddy, who is now a show dog. Um, he won his first championship show this weekend. There is a video coming on that very, very soon. But yeah, my, my baby boy is officially a show dog. Um, and yeah, he got first place in two, um, two, what are they called? Rings? Clearly, I'm an amateur. Two rings, two challenges, something like that. Um, so yeah, there'll be a video on that coming soon. But now let's go over and speak to Linda about our questions. Hi, Linda. I just thought I'd give you a second to like introduce yourself and then we'll get on to the questions. Hi, my name is Linda. Um, I'm a small animal vet and I also work uh, for Pooch and Mutt. So our first question is, are pets born with alopecia? Is it in their genetics? There are some breeds that are naturally hairless and it's in their genes. Uh, so for example, the hairless rat terrier is one of these breeds and the dogs were specifically bred that way. So that is normal for them. Um, but for an, an a furred breed to have alopecia when they're born would be extremely rare. It tends to be something that develops over time, whether it's due to hormonal diseases or chronic skin complaints, um, but mostly we see it in adult dogs. Thank you. So the next question is, how often should you bathe or wash your pet? It's a really good question, and it just depends on what breed you have, and also on their lifestyle. Um, a breed like the Poodle, you're going to have to, breed, to bathe quite often, so about every six to eight weeks um, due to their skin type. Whereas something like the Hungarian Puli, you're rarely, if ever, going to be bathing them. Um, my personal rule for my Cavapoo is if you jump in fox poo or roll in dog poo, you're getting a bath. If you get really muddy, you're getting a bath. But I don't bathe him too often um, because this can make skin quite dry and it can also lead to itchiness. My next question, particularly for me, you can see it just here, what is the impact to a dog that has alopecia? How does it affect them? That's a really good question. So if a dog doesn't have the fur um, that they normally do, they're going to get um, colder quicker and easier, especially in the winter months. So you might want to consider um, some sort of a jumper for them. And, and also in the summer months, they are potentially going to get sunburned because they don't have that fur offering them protection. So you might want to consider some uh, sun cream there. Thanks, Linda. Another question that was really popular um, is what are hot spots and how do you get them? What's the treatment? Um, I think it's something that's quite common with the Malamute breed and other thick coated dogs. Um, we've been fortunate enough so far, touch wood, 
not to uh, not to get any. Um, but yeah, what, what, do, what does a hotspot actually mean and what should you do if you think your dog's got one? So a hotspot is also known as acute moist dermatitis. And so basically it's just a patch of skin that has become inflamed, infected, it might be red, oozing, and the dog is always bothered by it. So they might be rubbing at it, scratching at it. Um, they can occur anywhere. They tend to occur kind of on the face or the forelimbs. And breeds who are most often affected are those with quite thick coats and heavy coats. Uh, so labs and retrievers and malamutes. Um, we generally see dogs get hot spots in the summertime due to the humidity. Um, and so things that can help prevent them would be things like routinely um, treating for parasites. Uh, so using your parasite prevention because dogs who are getting itchy because of fleas are certainly more prone to hot spots. Um, as well as this things like um, not over bathing your dog because that can dry out their skin, but also keeping them clean. Uh, so if they are getting very muddy or dirty, you know, going ahead and giving them a bath. Um, and what's the treatment for hot spots? So basically what you want to do um, is go to your vet <laughs> because um, they're difficult to treat at home and really antibiotics are needed. Um, so the vet normally will clip the fur so that we can get good ventilation in the area um, and use a product, a cleaning product, uh, such as chlorhexidine or hippie scrub to clean the area. And that's something you'll be then doing at home. And normally at dogs will also get antibiotics. Thanks, Linda. So my final question is what things can you add into your dog's diet to help promote a healthy skin and healthy coat? Well, there's plenty of ingredients out there that will help. Um, things like essential fatty acids, um, as well as collagen, can help to um, create a healthy skin barrier. And this not only traps the moisture inside the skin, it also stops things like allergens um, penetrating the skin layer, which is really important for those dogs with allergies. Um, you might also want to consider supplementing biotin, which can help to create um, a stronger coat as well as stronger claws. So I hope that this has helped answer some of the more uh, common questions. Um, thank you. Don't say thank you to Linda. Say thank you. Go. Oh, oh, good boy. Thank you so much, Linda, for jumping on this call with us. We really appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully we can do another one soon. I'm going to ask the guys on um, our channel to leave a comment with other topics that you would like us to cover. Um, and hopefully we can do another one in the near future. But yeah, thank you very much. Now that we're done with Linda, I want to go on to um, what we're doing to try and promote a healthy skin and coat and particularly with Phil what I'm trying to do to prevent the spread of alopecia as much as possible to try and keep it as stable as it is now there is no cure um we know that I've done many videos on that in the past but every I'm trying to incorporate everything I can into his diet into his hair care routine into his grooming to ensure his coat is as protected as possible because every strand for Phil counts certainly and then for Teddy and Nico, I just want to ensure they're getting everything they need to keep their coat in as perfect condition as possible. Okay, ready? Oh, this is heavy. It's your food, isn't it? So guys, just coming on to what we do um, to help Phil's coat. So we swapped over to Pooch and Mutt's new soft and shiny pet food. Six weeks ago now, I think this is our third bag of it. Um and yeah this is what phil's been on it's just as linda had said it's filled with omega collagen biotin <laughs> hello milo all things to help with a healthy coat so we took him off the joint care food and switched him over to this milo thank you so, so this is his new dry bowl. then um next we um he obviously has wet food with every meal too we do have a mixture of different flavors we have some meat ones particularly for the others but for phil i try to use the fish potato and pea quite a fishy diet um this is also really low in fat and obviously sustainably sourced then as you all know one of my favorites is the salmon oil um, this goes in mixed in with every meal um, and it's obviously for all three of the pets, but it's filled with omegas, three, six, and nine, um, aids skin and coat, quality, heart health, and joint mobility. Um, I use that particularly for the skin and coat. And then the OG, the original skin and coat treats. So the skin and coat dog food and the fish wet food are quite new for Poochamut, but this one was the OG that we started with. And these are 
treats slash supplements. So they're filled with all the omega, collagen, biotin and everything. Um, but what they are, are small treats. I was looking they smell just like coconut they're filled with lots of coconut uh, but you can give up to 30 a day because they're not full of anything bad and um, so it's kind of more of a food supplement i would say but phil likes to think of them as a treat don't you buddy so yeah so this is everything that we're doing i'm going to update you on the progress i'll insert a clip here of phil and his new hair growth which for me i didn't think was a possibility um I, my goal was to slow the spread but i am seeing new hair coming in his bold patches so i'll insert a little clip of that and yeah we're on week six now he's loving it he hasn't really noticed any change in terms of his diet he took to it straight away um but let's just keep an eye on his hair loss and his hair quality um and yeah i'll keep you guys posted i'll touch base again probably in a couple of months time once we've been on it for a, a good stint um yeah guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you would like us to do another q a with linda on a different subject um let us know in the comments below and we'll speak to pucha mart and see if we can get a bit more of her time um for another one but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one bye everyone